Nuclear submarines are the staple of any modern Navy. But where do they come from? Well, behind me is a test platform that was used by the U.S. Navy to develop the earliest nuclear submarines. This is the story of the USS Albacore. At the beginning of the Cold War in the mid-20th century, military technology began to advance at an unprecedented rate. The third ship to bear the name Albacore would revolutionize submarine technology. After World War II, it became clear that undersea combat was the future of naval warfare. But submarines of this era had one major drawback they were unable to stay underwater for significant periods of time, as they would have to surface in order to feed oxygen into their engines. Nuclear power would allow submarines to stay submerged for longer periods of time. The designing of the Albacore would begin in 1949. Engineers would completely forego the upper deck, and instead they would design the Albacore with a revolutionary teardrop design. On December 5th of 1953, the Albacore would be commissioned. On August 1st of the same year, she would go on her maiden voyage. The Albacore was an experimental test platform, hence the motto, Forerunner of the Future. Throughout its service, the ship would undergo five major refits, each refit to test new technologies. One of the major innovations that came from the Albacore was in terms of speed. It was extremely difficult to maintain stability whilst going high speeds in submarines of the time. Engineers approached this issue with something called hydrobatics, which is like aerobatics in planes. New control systems as well as the design of the hull led to the Albacore becoming the fastest submarine at the time. Its performance was considered extraordinary. The design was so revolutionary that future U.S. Navy submarines would be based using what was called the Albacore hull. The first of these was the USS Nautilus. Even to this day, the designs and technologies that were learned from the Albacore are still implemented in modern submarines around the world. Despite being unarmed and never fulfilling a combat role, the Albacore is still one of the most impressive and one of the most important naval vessels of the 20th century. After almost two decades of service, it would be decommissioned on September 1st of 1972. She would then be placed with a reserve fleet in Philadelphia. Here she would sit for many years, her legacy slowly being forgotten. In 1982, efforts would be made to return the Albacore to her hometown. In May of 1985, she would finally make her way back to New Hampshire, but it wasn't easy getting her there. William Keefe, a city council member in the city of Portsmouth, would lead the project to bring the Albacore back home. Unable to find a suitable place to display the Albacore by sea, it was decided that it shall be displayed on land. Getting the submarine all the way down to New Hampshire would be a challenge. The Army tug Okinawa would tow the Albacore 575 miles, from Philadelphia to the city of Portsmouth. Due to the sleek design of the Albacore, every time the tug would slow down, the submarine would begin to move up and overtake the tug. After a long journey, the Albacore would eventually make it to the Naval Reserve Center at the shipyard in Portsmouth. Here the Albacore was repaired and it returned to working order. 
A concrete cradle was constructed at the location the albacore would be displayed on dry land. In order to move the albacore to the cradle, a four-lane highway had to be cut through and a railroad trestle had to be removed. On May 4th of 1985, the albacore had finally arrived at her cradle, which would be her final resting place. The USS Albacore changed naval warfare forever, and it has left behind an incredible legacy. It is currently open to the public as a museum. If you're ever going through the city of Portsmouth, I highly recommend taking a detour to check it out. The USS Albacore is an important part of New Hampshire's past, and it will never be forgotten. darker